everyone. So it's gonna take me a few seconds to log onto my IG live feed. So I'm gonna do just that. And hopefully we're going to be having a good network connectivity today. Mm. I'm so excited about today's topic. I don't know if you are. Um, okay. I am live on my IG feed. So let's, I want to be sure that I am on Spectranet. Yes, Spectranet. I have better connectivity on Spectranet. Let's see. Okay. Hello. Wally underscore plus. Thank you for joining in, Wally. I'm sure today is your first time joining us on Life's Journey. If today is your first time, welcome to Life's Journey with Benedicta. So we are here live on my Instagram and we are live on my YouTube. If you haven't subscribed to my YouTube channel, it is youtube.com forward slash taste buds ng and to all of you that have subscribed to my youtube channel i would like to say a very very big thank you thank you for sharing my videos thank you most importantly for all the comments that you drop on my youtube it will come to you as a surprise that those comments are very helpful to people that are going through the situations that we have discussed uh we have discussed about so, so if you listen to any of our videos and you have experienced what we have discussed or you have an idea of how others that went through this phase were able to sort themselves out please indicate in the comment section you don't know whose life you're going to be saving you don't know who's love life, whose marriage, whose journey through life you are going to be contributing to. So your comments are very important to us. And remember, while you are commenting on our YouTube feed, please be respectful. There is no need fighting each other or talking down on another person's opinion. We are all entitled to our own opinion. Well, so please be respectful in the comment section. So, Uyo, you, you joined. Ogba Chichi, Don Luz, Barcode 119, Chima Stanley, Vivian Nikkei 363. Thank you for joining in. So, on today's topic... I am going to be discussing weird intimate desires. Weird intimate desires. Just like the topic connotes weird intimate desires. Hello, Daddy Freeze. Hello, everyone. How are you doing? So, Daddy, please, we are discussing weird, weird intimate desires. So, are weird you joining us? Desires in a couple. Yes, we had intimate desires and in, in, a, in a union, and we're discussing how couples cope. Because last week we discussed, um, last week we talked about side chicks or side chickism. And I had loads of comments. I 
I, I read, uh, or rather I discussed with some women that told me that the reason why their marriage came to an end was because they had different S orientation with their spouses. Okay. Hmm. So. Okay, you know what? Let me allow the guys to come and join you on your page. Guys, please, if you're on Instagram, leave my channel. The rest of you, I can see some of you have migrated there. It's at TasteBudsNG. Go there now. On YouTube, it's youtube.com forward slash TasteBudsNG. Please, I beg you, my lovely Facebook people and my lovely YouTube people, please follow TasteBuds. They are, they are here. I can see Henry underscore the great. Now let me sign out on my Instagram and see if they'll come. Guys, taste buds and geo. Good. I'm signing out on my Instagram now. <laughs> Don't worry, I'm using my backup account with you. So I'm going to see this. Freddie Lion Let's King, I'm right. here. I can see you, Freddie Lion King. Henry underscore great. Yeah, they are all here, Daddy Freeze. Okay, so that means we can be rest assured that they're going to join you and learn. See you, Daddy Freeze. Okay, they're all saying from Daddy Freeze, I'm here now. The numbers are rising. I'm not going to leave until I see 150 people watching. It's 139. 140. Yes, 140 now. 144. <laughs> 145, Nurse underscore Dan one, thank you for joining me. Yes, one big house. And 150, bye. Bye bye. <laughs> so that was Daddy Freeze. Uh, Big family, Ebos underscore Jav, thank you for joining in. Arabic underscore Requesa, thank you for joining in. So, on today's topic, we are going to be discussing different um, S orientation. Now, remember, because this is being uh, broadcast on my YouTube uh, channel, I have to be selective with my choice of words. If not, I'm going to have my channel flagged. So if I say S, you should understand what I'm talking about. I cannot mention the entire three letter words, but today we're gonna to be discussing weird intimate desires in a union, weird intimate desires in a marriage. How do couples cope? And how did I come about this topic? It was some. Uh, it it was some of the comments I got from my last week. Uh, last week's topic when I discussed side chicks, or some of you will call it side chickism, and we wanted to know why we had this whole side chick phenomenon. Why is it that men, or most men, or most married men, would insist on having side chicks? So some ladies dropped their comments and one of them said that her husband categorically told her that the reason why he has a side chick and he would always have a side chick is because she wasn't open to uh, adventurous s ideas in their matrimonial bed now we're talking about couples people that are already married what should be the S limits, you know, when we're talking about intimacy, when we're talking about intimacy between couples, what should be the limit? Now, this topic is going to be treated in two phases. Today, I'm just going to lay the foundation for this topic. And then next week, I'm going to have a special guest come live and discuss this topic with me. So for today, we're laying down the topic. What should be the limit when it comes to 
intimate relations in the matrimonial bed or on the matrimonial bed with your husband or your wife. This lady in particular told me that presently her marriage is over because she decided to file for a divorce. And why did she do that? The husband is a, a serial cheat or the husband was a serial cheat and he made it clear to her that he will constantly have a side chick. Reason being that she wasn't open to his S ideas, his intimate ideas and ways that he would like to be intimate with her. So as a woman or as a man, do you have limits in your matrimonial or on your matrimonial bed? Do you have limits? Do you think there should be limits? Some men are going to argue and they're going to tell you, even the Bible says, wives obey your husbands. And the wives will say, the Bible also says, husbands love your wife. And if a man honestly loves his wife. He shouldn't expect some certain things from her. Now, we should realize that when we do not expect those things from our husbands, they would take it out of the home. They will take it somewhere else. There's always going to be one side chick that will be open to enabling them to live their sexual desires. So, Back to what I said, the S word is not going to be mentioned. But just know that there is always that side chick out there that is going to somersault, spin, do 360 degrees, do whatever it takes to keep your man. So as a woman, should we really have limits? As a wife, should we really put limits for our husbands when it comes to being intimate? Remember that some men have different S orientation from their wives and some women have different S orientation from their husbands. So if you find out that you are in this dilemma, what are you going to do? How far would you go in ensuring that you keep your marriage? Some people have religious barriers, some women are very religious and they believe some certain things shouldn't be done in the bedroom with their husbands. And some husbands believe that certain things are reserved for the side chicks and not for their wives. So I would like to hear your take on this. I would like to hear your opinion on this. I believe we all have or might have experienced this one in one form or another. Now, Ijoma uh, Ho, Okafo, that's Ijoma Okafo, she said, is bringing another man, woman in your matrimonial bed not a sin, just asking. Well, like I said, the Bible tells us, if you are a Christian, the Bible tells us that women should obey their husbands and husbands should love their wives. So Ijoma Okafo, if your husband should tell you that he's willing to bring another man into your matrimonial bed, would you disobey him? And if you do disobey him, would you be, would you be um, obeying the dictates of the Bible? I'm just asking. And if he tells you that that is his fetish, and if you do not do that, that he's going to do that with his side chick, and you really want this marriage to work. I really want you, Jamal Okafo, to understand the kind of pressures that wives are being put under. And we live in this part of the world where women would rather do anything. When I mean anything, they would rather do anything to keep their marriage than filing for a divorce. And I'll still say it on this channel, a lot of people have come against me, they've uh, antagonized me because they feel I am pro-divorce. 
uh, I encourage people to file for a divorce if the marriage isn't working. But remember, I'll always say this. You as a man or as a woman, you have to do everything, everything humanly possible to ensure that your marriage works. And if you have crossed all your T's and dotted all your I's and the marriage isn't working, I would advise you to file for a divorce and leave. Your life, your mental health is worth more than anything. So don't just come at me and say, oh, taste buds is encouraging divorce. I wouldn't advise you to file for a divorce if you haven't tried everything possible to salvage your union. So Ijama Okoafo, threesome, you meant, okay. So this will be left for you and your partner to decide. Remember that moral values, what we see as moral values or what we understand as moral values varies from uh, society to society. It is the society that determines what is moral. For example, here in Nigeria, it is absolutely normal for a man to want to have more than one wife. But in the Western world, it will be frowned upon. It will be seen as an abnormality. So it is the society that determines what our moral construct should be. So Ifi or Ijama Okafo, sorry, in this part of the world, what you just said will be frowned upon. But if this is your husband's fetish, and he insists on either doing this with you or going out to do this with his side chick. What would be your response? Would you continue in that marriage or would you leave it? I just said that a lady dropped in the comment section that the different orientation, different S orientation she had with her ex-husband was what brought an end to their union. And it got me thinking, weird, intimate desires. How far are we willing to go to salvage our marriage? Freddie Lion King says, our 369 kitchen foods. I see her move, but I don't think follow taste but since she's a very intelligent woman with educative uh, comments. Thank you, Freddie Lion King. Um, Elvis, thank you for joining in. Um, so like I said, we are just watering the grounds this week. We're still going to be discussing this topic next week. And I'm going to be having a fun guest next week to join me in discussing this. But I want us to really think about this. I want us to really think about this what would be your reaction should you find out that you have a totally different S orientation, totally different uh, idea of what S fantasy should be like in the bedroom. Some people will say there are certain things they will never do with their boyfriends. There are certain things they will never do with a man they're dating but the will do with their husbands. Because they believe that in a marriage, there is security. Whatever it's done in a marriage between a husband and a wife stays in that home, stays in that union. It doesn't leave the house. But if you're dating someone, there is no guarantee that the person might not break up with you and date somebody else. But I think that is even a weak argument because what is the guarantee that the person you're married to today is not going to leave you tomorrow? Here on Life's Journey, there was a topic I did, and we had a lady tell us how upon filing for a divorce, her currently ex-husband released nude photographs of her on the internet. This was someone she was married to for a certain number of years upon her filing for a divorce he released her nude 
photographs to the public. So I don't think we should look at it from the uh, perspective of being in a relationship, just dating and being in a marriage. I think we should look at it from the point, from the point of what we are willing to condone as an individual, how far we are willing to go in, in pleasing our husbands or our wives. What do you think is the limit that you can go as a person? If you cannot talk about it here, I would appreciate if you can drop your comments on, on my YouTube channel, youtube.com forward slash tasteboardng. I want these ladies that are too ashamed or afraid of coming out to air their opinions and are in this situation. I want them to read these comments and get closure if their marriage is ended as a result of this. And if they are looking for answers to a current relationship, I also want them to be able to get some pointers from your comments. Binta underscore Ghana, I thought you'll be sleeping or still in that party. We in our way to West Palm, but turning in. Oh, next week, it's me and you. We're really going to dissect this. So we're just watering the ground this week. So I want you guys to drop your comments in the comment section because we're going to be discussing this next week. We're really going to be dissecting this topic next week. I want you to tell me the limits, what you know you cannot do, and what you think is unethical, what you think is unchristian-like. Un, un because like I said earlier on, some people wouldn't do some certain things because of their religious beliefs, because of their religious affiliations. And some wouldn't just do some certain things because of their upbringing, the moral values that has been instilled into them from birth until date. So let me know what your limits are. Uh, Namzu, if you're not compatible before marriage in matters that relate to S, you shouldn't go ahead with the marriage. Namu underscore TH, this is going to be a topic for another day. You know why? You said if you are not compatible before marriage in matters that relate to S. Remember that we have some people that strongly believe that intimacy should only be actualized after the union. Only after marriage should couples have intimate knowledge of each other. So if you are talking about S compatibility, if you are talking about knowledge of S compatibility before the union, this is not going to work in the situation where the couple chooses to be intimate after the union. So in a situation like this, NAMU underscore TH, there's going to be a serious, serious problem. I remember, was it last week or last two weeks when we treated a topic um, on some marital topic and a lady said, the husband was brutal he wasn't he wasn't gentle with her whenever they were intimate he would rather have it rough than being gentle and as a result of that she has decided to allow him, him have his way with side chicks so she has resolved that for as long as she's married to this man she would allow him to have his way with side chicks and what was the reason because she married him as a virgin. She married her husband as a virgin. So she had no prior uh, in, uh, S knowledge of the husband. So she only got to discover what he liked after the marriage. So that is her faith. 
So in a situation whereby the, the cop, uh, a couple has decided to be intimate only after the marriage, this is not going to work. So Jane Tuba says, I'm single, thanks, I'm learning. Please learn. There are certain things we can learn while single. You know, it's going to save us um, a whole lot of trouble. You know, there are certain things you cannot learn in marriage. Or rather, if you learn them for the first time in your marriage, it's going to be disastrous. So for those that aren't married yet, please listen and learn. Taste buds, Angie, bring people on. Ezekiel underscore ministries. Yes. Would you like to come on? Ezekiel underscore ministries. Would you like to join my live and share your opinion? So, Olushina says, how did you see praying about your spouse compatibility before getting married? Yes, it is very important that you pray about uh, compatibility between you and your spouse before getting married. But remember, we have different types of compatibility. It's not just in, uh, uh, S compatibility, intimate compatibility with your spouse. There are so many levels to this whole compatibility um, issue. You can be compatible with your your spouse when it comes to managing finances you can be compatible with your spouse when it comes to educational matters you can be compatible with your spouse when it comes to um, uh, career choices and so many other things but that is not a criteria that you will be compatible with your partner when it comes to matters in the bedroom and the only way we can learn about this sometimes is by finding out prior to the marriage. And how you choose to find out prior to the marriage will vary from person to person or from couple to couple. But however, Olushina's prayers is very important. Prayers is key. We have to pray. And also show working, not just pray. You have to show working. Find out. Do due diligence. Find out. 27 underscore architect says, even when you um, even when you're, compa uh, you're compatible before marriage, people change and learn new things and develop new fantasies. 27 underscore architect, this is very intelligent. This is a very intelligent, a very brilliant point you just raised. People grow. Let us remember that change is the only constant in life. Change is the only constant. Change will happen to us all. So even in marriage, remember that some people even got married as, um, as, as an inexperienced uh, person when it comes to intimate relations. They were so knowledgeable they were so not knowledgeable they were naive but upon getting into the marriage uh uh union they became knowledgeable and they even became adventurous we've heard so many stories of women that were virgins upon marriage and many years into the marriage they became promiscuous they became adventurous they grew, they wanted to know more, they wanted to find out about so many things that they didn't have the opportunity to find out prior to the marriage. So 27 underscore architect, you are making absolute sense. A lot of people get into this union and they grow and they change and their desires, their fantasies change. How do we cope? As a couple, how do we cope? Do you give in to this change? Do you rebel do you fight against this change and do you back off and say no no it is enough this is the line i am not going beyond how do we handle this 
you have just heard that a lady in my comment section said that this incompatibility issue led to the ex-husband becoming a serial cheat. He didn't hide it. He made it clear to her that he will continue cheating because he wasn't getting what he wanted from the union. And as a result of his continuous cheating, she filed for a divorce. Today, she's the divorcee, not of her own choosing, but because she couldn't bend to what the husband was suggesting. So this is a very important topic for us to talk about. Jenny Stitches says, have been on so many, have been on so many, any wrong relationships that all oh, it scares it scares me I can have it scares me that I can ever have a perfect one compatibility is a big deal Jenny stitches you're right compatibility is a big deal Jane Tubo I'm scared of even talking about relationship I really need to understand why don't feel XP says can you make have got bad experience in relationship and I'm sc still scared with the stigma. Yes, this happens to us all, you know. When we have been beaten once, we've had a terrible relationship, people wouldn't want to go that way. But guess what? When love comes knocking on the door, you will be willing to give it a try. So this is the topic for this week. And remember, we're going to be talking about this next week. When we have all those comments come in, we're now going to be able to fully dissect this issue because whether we like it or not, this is a problem that a lot of couples are facing secretly in their homes, on their matrimonial beds, and they would not be able to come out to talk about it. So. Remember, if you've been hurt before, you've been cheated upon, love will come knocking. So you have faith. Don't be in a hurry to find that perfect match because really there isn't a perfect match anywhere. You can always meet each other in the middle and make things work. Nami underscore TH says, I don't think the grow and change in, in matters of S in the marriage. Before marriage, people know their intimacy desires. If they are virgins or not, they know. Most times, people don't explore these desires. Yes, you are right. Nami underscore TH. They do not explore these desires because they are scared of confronting their innermost desires. They're just scared. And sometimes it takes a partner to bring out those fantasies. It takes a willing partner to make you live out those fantasies. So we're going to be discussing all this and more next week. So see you same time next week. And don't miss our episode next week. It's going to be explosive. It's going to be interactive. We're going to have people come and talk about this issue as it has affected them. So Jenny Stitches, compatibility is far and not just wants as desires. There is so much more to it. Jenny Stitches, Namu OH, next week is going to be very interactive. I need you to drop all your comments on our YouTube channel in the comment section and we are going to be dissecting everything. So thank you for joining in. See you same time next week. Bye-bye.